There you go. That's the governor of Guam, uh, Governor Lulian Guerrero. How is she feeling? Very much a little bit confident. Um, Senator Teletitigui now joins. All the senators have been we're put out a cast a wide net, asked the vice speaker to come on. Uh, Put out an ask to Senator Rigel. Of course, we had the speaker, minority leader, on yesterday. We had Senator Moylan on this morning. Uh, just kind of playing gushathon this morning. Uh, Senator Teletitigui uh, joining us now. So, spill, girl, spill. <laughs> what, what happened? Always happy to be here this morning. Off a day, Chris, Sabrina, and Jason, and the Katie William family, and those listening. To this morning. Right. I know um, um, I know the <laughs> slogan is usually tell it to Tello, but we're hoping Tello will tell it to us this morning. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so true. Well, you know, I, I yesterday on the show, I came uh, on the show very enthusiastic and excited about getting together and finally, you know, hashing this out. You know, I, I showed up to that meeting with a calculator in one hand and I, I brought my snacks, like you said, um, extra drinks, ready to roll. I had my whole binder, and then when I was sitting there, I was looking around and like, why doesn't anybody else have like documents or paperwork like I did? I, I had everything ready to go. And um, when I started listening to the governor's, uh, her opening remarks, and the lieutenant governor is gracious as always. He's, he's a, I'm, I really like that guy, you know, I'll just tell you. But, um, after she was done, she only allowed the speaker and the minority leader to speak. And I was thinking, oh my gosh, okay, wait a minute. Are we going to go down the line? Aren't we going to start with, you know, uh, section one of, of our, our wish list and it goes down the list? Oh, is that, you got Sabrina's Sorry, that's my dog. I'm yeah, Bree. No worries. No worries. Hungry. Sounds we don't like know. Does, is the dog agreeing with Senator Tello or disagreeing, Bree? No, he, he's jumping in and saying, yeah, that's right, that's right. <laughs> what kind of snacks did you, you bring? You tell it, tell him. <laughs> you tell it, tell him. But um, <clears throat> I was just, you know, and then um, after, you know, our minority leader spoke, who was the last one to speak, I, I was like, okay, let's let's get to work now. Let's decide, you know, where this money is going to go to. You brought us to the table. Or at least, or at least show us your wish list, Governor. We came with ours, and and then I, you know, I took the benefit of the doubt and said, okay, well, maybe we all found out now it's only going to be 553 in the next four days, and then later on we're going to have additional funding, um, which will take it up to a total of 603 million dollars. So maybe we need a little bit more time. But I, I came to the table with, okay, where are we going to make these cuts? You know. Uh, we, we maintain section one and two of our letter and take 23 across the board, 23% across the board to reach that 553. Mm. You know, I was, I was just ready to go. And it was ironic because um, I don't see why the media should not have been there. They could have at least been in the room, uh, maybe not participate to ask questions or things right. like that, um, but at least be able to film this. And, um, and I think, that if the media was there, then that room would not have been so deafening. I mean, the only people who are asking questions, I, th I think Senator Ada had asked one question. Senator Frank um, asked a couple of questions. Um, Sabina uh, asked the question, of course, the speaker. I think I, I asked like six different questions. You know, how long will this money, will we have to spend this money? Um, are you planning on saving any, uh, putting some of the money away for the other fiscal years, which brought up a very um, interesting information that they did the math and said that within um, the three years, they predict that there's going to be a revenue shortfall of $390 million in the next three years. So that's $390 million. That's what they predicted. So on top of that, I mean, that's that's more than half of what we're going to get yeah. in, in ARC money. Um, I, I was just, you know, I was disappointed that we didn't, you know, roll up our sleeves and start working on what we're going to do. I mean, everybody, I, I hope the intention, I think the intention of everybody is to make sure that this money is spent wisely 
And um, like Senator Sabina Paris said, uh, that procurement is followed, the procedures on procurement. And that was the one thing that Senator Sabina uh, had brought up. But unfortunately, we didn't do that. In fact, we didn't even see her wish list. You know, Man. we showed her ours. She didn't show she you her. She needs to show us her. <laughs> <laughs> did she say, though, that she was going to be providing one? You know, it, it was kind of, uh, you know, cloudy on what the next step was. Nobody even brought up what the next step was other than for her to say, okay, you can now meet with uh, Senator St. Augustine, you know, at, at OFB to, uh, to touch base with him. It's like, okay, we're done here. So at the end of the meeting, I went up to the governor to ask her, well, governor, when do you plan on putting your, your list together so that we can see? Oh, uh, well, well, we'll do it very soon. We'll do it very soon. So it would have been so much easier too if the media was there in the room, I have to admit, you know, um, because then you're not going to get, you know, secondhand information. You're going to hear from us. And you had that press release with the governor. I mean, what was really said in between, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, but I'm, I'm still optimistic. We know that uh, ultimately she has the authority on spending this funding, which money that belongs to the people of Guam. I'm going to keep pushing and advocating for, for certain uh, projects, you know, myself. But yeah, I was, we did go a little bit longer than an hour, so. <laughs> yeah, you did. Just a tad. Yeah. So you thought it so was Senator like. Senator Moylan said that it was, it, it could have just been 30, 30 minutes. Of, because there wasn't really a lot of, what did he say, meat? Yeah. It was a vegan well, he meeting. he should ask some questions, you know. He, he should have asked some questions. He was very um, um, vocal about um, the RISE Act, which was, you know, um, yesterday on air and I was I was hoping that he would bring that up and try to get out of her you know um, what is her plan for the RISE Act funding or funding for the RISE Act and if I'm not mistaken uh, um, I heard a little bit about how she wants to expand it um, but that was in the media you know I didn't really catch on in the meeting of how she is going to do that expansion and she's going to increase the funding um like i said a lot of people were very quiet in the meeting they didn't ask the questions i kind of felt you know out of place because i kept jumping up with all these questions and um so you know there's i'm I, it sounds to me like you know uh sabrina and chris that this probably is that's the end it you know we're done Okay, this is our, our collaboration, it's over. Mm -hmm. But the important part that needs to be calculated in the whole perspective is the budget and this RF funding meshing together. We have to come up with a budget. We need that list where the governor is gonna spend so that we know how to move forward with the FY22 budget. That's really important. So I'm hoping and that, you know, I'm being optimistic that um, that list, her wish list or her final decision will come within the next week. Um, we're already going into June. I mean, this is the part we start listening to budgets, you know, right, right, moving forward. Right, right. But, um, did Lester, Lester Carlson or Mr. Byrne, did they, they speak at all during the yeah. meeting? Yeah, they talked about the guidelines. They talked about the same thing they spoke to in the press release uh, with um, that was held in the smaller conference room. They talked about the structure of how uh, the, their next step, when they're going to receive the money, um, what guidelines they have to follow and submit. And uh, that's that's about it, you know, when it comes to the funding. Of course, we all know about you know in the next four days the 553. I mean, everything that was mentioned in the media. Uh, was capital improvement funds. That I'm very curious to find out how much money. I believe um, in my notes, if I'm not mistaken. Um, oh, here we we should have about 14 million coming for uh, capital improvement or CPF, yeah, funding. So this is good. 
you know, a, a lot of funding is coming to our island to help and assist much more than most of the other um, U.S. states. So I'm, I'm really, um, I'm very grateful for it. Don't get me wrong. I'm very grateful for it. I think that uh, it's important that we find out exactly where this money is going to and, and but most especially to the people of Guam, which it's intended to, who lost revenue, who's lost um, the ability to sustain you know, to uh, sustain themselves, to feed their family. That's the most important thing. And when I did my calculations and brought forward, I, I said that's those two things that should not be eliminated from our wish list, from the legislature's wish list, which is section one, for money going directly to the people of Guam to assist them to survive. And uh, everything else after that, we can reduce. Senator. So is that something that Go ahead, Chris. Go ahead, Bree. So is that something that the legislature plans to do? Go back uh, uh, and meet again with amongst yourselves to kind of find ways to cut down uh, the spending list? Well, I think the, the governor, like I said, was kind of foggy on where we're going to move next. The only thing I've gotten direction is go see Joe St. Augustine, Senator Joe St. Augustine yes. at OSB, which was very, you know, I thought we were supposed to work together. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm trying to be optimistic about this, um, keeping an eye on the funding, make sure that it's spent correctly, procurement procedures are followed in every aspect of the word, um, and, you know, move forward on this. But oh, this is like night. Night and day reaction. Yeah, um, you know, Bree, this is a problem with a from secret. From what you got yesterday, yeah. Chris. This is like a secret. <laughs> this is the problem with a secret meeting is everybody has a different version of what happened, which is why the media should have been present, should have been at the very least able to stream this meeting. Uh, I mean, it's just heavy handed to have it a, as a closed door meeting. And, you know, I've, I've heard that some of your colleagues are like, oh, what's the big deal? You know what I mean? But I think the big deal is this is a consistent trend with this administration to not be transparent and to not provide access and you know to not really present themselves to be held accountable i mean even if it was a fluff meeting we'd like to have known that for ourselves and you know been able to yes pass it on to the people i mean it's just basic it's basic i don't you know i sound like a broken record but it's just basic so senator tello like no, none of your colleagues said hey well we gave you our plan where's this plan that you keep talking about because i mean every other word was oh they're the lines of my plan my plan and you know yeah it's very similar to my plan but yet we ain't seen no plan no one thought to say well can we see your plan yeah well it, it was yeah i think the meeting was just to say thank you very much for your wish list and that was it you know we 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 like your ideas, they're the same as ours. And um, like I said, I was there, rolled up my sleeves, ready to go, brought my snacks, brought my calculator, had my calculator ready, you know, to do some work. You know, I, I, I just, uh, that it, it was disappointing, you know, that, that we did not sit down and just go through each section of it. Um, I was surprised that she wanted to give some money to the airport, uh, which was not part of our wish list uh, mm. because the airport received quite a bit of funding. Yeah. yeah. Um, the CARES Act, and, and she wanted to give some money in that direction. So um, we could have ha talked talked about that. Yeah. You know, I mean, mm. she said there was lost revenue. I think it was about. Um, Gosh, somewhere along the line of uh, da, 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 about 46 million in lost revenue, which right. you know it's not surprising. But they also received the grant uh, grant funding, quite a bit of money. She also talked about bomb solid waste and uh, even the utility section of this, saying that she's been in conversation with the utilities, um, almost alluding to we don't need to give any money to them. And I, you know, didn't elaborate yeah. on it. Saw that coming. Um, so that was quite interesting. Yeah. Uh, right, guys, what's what's <laughs> crucial about this utilities money is the legislature's spending plan for the ARP involved giving the utilities 
a significant amount of money so that we wouldn't have to pay higher rates for water over the next three years. They're, they're doing a 10% increase every year for the next three years. And so part of the legislature's priority spend plan was like, hey, let's give Guam Water Works all these millions of dollars to upgrade stuff so that the rate payers don't have to foot the bill for it. And I kind of had a feeling that the governor wouldn't really support that. And so you're saying that she had indicated that she doesn't. Yeah, I'm quite, I'm, I was hoping, you know, to discuss the utilities because it's in dire need. You know, I mean, we, we gave a full explanation and, and justification for the need for that. And um, to not to be able to sit and talk about this, I'm, you know, was just really hoping that uh, we could have hashed this out. And um, it was more of a thank you so much, like I said, for it pre wish list. Um, and I'll continue to be optimistic. Um, going to Senator St. Augustine was <laughs> um, not my idea of collaboration because that's on our team. He's on our team. Supposedly, that's the legislative no. side. We need to work with the administration. No, he's on their team. Well, it sure, I, I don't know. <laughs> so, I don't uh, know. All you, right. Y'all need to be on the people's team. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's oh, no. right. Amen, you know, Bruce. absolutely. And be open, transparent about how you're going to spend this money. It's now the door has been closed. We yeah. gave our two cents and it's going to be closed now. So. Um, what um, we just have to be mindful of everything that's going on right now. Uh, we've got all the information from the U.S. Treasury. We know when the money is coming in. Uh, we're going to continue to introduce legislation that brings transparency to the floor. Ask you know, and ask the governor to make sure she follows procurement yeah. um, in in doing what she plans to do with this funding. But you know, I'm planning on looking into other states and what they're how they're collaborating with both branches of government right. and how they're working together. Because yeah. in, in the and CARES Act, no suggestions through. In the CARES Act, like Bri had, had mentioned, right, Bri, we saw a, a proposed spend plan for the CARES Act funding. Yeah. yeah. We didn't see anything uh, this time. And Senator, so what did you make? Uh, we were able to ask the governor because you guys in your proposal had said, okay, $200 million for the new hospital. The governor has been very firm on $300 million and up. Uh, this is a kind of you know, where there's going to be some disagreement, uh, so to speak. So what did what did you make of that? And did she say, like, wow, you guys shorted me $100 million on the hospital? Well, she didn't say that. I actually brought it up. Um, she didn't talk about it. So in one of my questions I brought up was, um, Governor, you know, our proposal had had uh, um, 200000 I mean, for me personally, I would like to see more money put into building the million. hospital. I did from day one, right? So... Um, uh, I said, ha I asked her the question, how did she feel about that? And she goes, well, you know, I, I saw, you know, uh, what you wrote. And basically she said that she, like you said, she wants to maintain that 300,000. And that's when million. I brought up. 300 the million? Yeah. Huh. Uh, 300 million, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Uh, 300 million. And I also brought up the uh, the debt ceiling because we're, we're at 395 million dollars you know available only for debt ceiling mm -hmm. and yeah. according to her calculations um or even the the hospital task force we're, we're looking at 1.06 billion dollars that's in, incorporating a hundred a hundred million dollars for public health a hundred million dollars for um behavioral wellness um and then uh, on top of that the uh, and then a 50 Fifty million dollars for, um, I guess, inflation and costs. You know, as it's building through any uh, different essentials, on top of the seven hundred million dollars um, plus, I think it's like seven hundred eight hundred million dollars plus for the hospital. How much was that? Uh, eight eight hundred and seventeen million dollars for the hospital. So yeah, I brought that question up because it's obvious. Other than you know the the fluff. And you know me, I'm straight to the point kind of girl. You know, let's cut the flush, fluff, and then go straight into the, the meat of everything and find out what we're going to do. So um, I guess that's why I was asking all these questions. Yeah. The hospital is an issue. Uh, what about the rainy day? Uh, then everyone's finding out there's three years of, uh, there's going to be a shortfall of $390 million in the next three years, accumulative. Um, so... I'm anxious to see her list, and I hope we have it within the next week. 
um, they work on it. And, and you know, granted, uh, the information that we all received uh, from from uh, Treasury about 553 yeah. was a far cry from the 664. Yeah. So they're going to have yeah. they're, they're going to have to come up with some way to reduce that amount or what what they plan to cut. Yeah. And like I said, I was ready to cut. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you I was ready could. to sit and yeah. roll up our sleeves to give the people of Guam an answer to how this money is going to be spent. Uh, Senator, so, tell us um, though. Um, it, although you guys did uh, in your spend plan uh, indicate that two hundred million would go towards a new hospital, um, a lot of conversation is not just like having a new hospital, but being able to fill it with the nurses and the doctors. And so there was a, a couple other items in your spend plan, one of them was uh, for University of Guam to increase scholarship monies for nurses and also protect scholarship for medical uh, people going to medical school. So what was, did the governor comment on that at all? And is that something you're in support of? Um, absolutely in support of that when it comes to helping the students um, and when it comes to education and providing the, the um, their tuition. The I, I think she didn't bring anything up about that, but I did talk about that with my staff the other day because of the bill that was passed to allow the University of Guam to actually go into a 30 year um, lease without legislative approval. And this was something I, I voted again because of the debt ceiling. But the only mechanism that we have in place to justify that is GITA. They would still have to work with GITA and GITA would have to approve it. But no, nothing else on the University of Guam. My one of my biggest concerns, and uh, granted, I, I was asking probably about six questions while everybody, you know, those who did the very few that asked questions had like one, so I felt like out of place. One of the things I wanted to bring up is: is there any funding that they're going to use to um, increase salaries or or hire additional um, staff with this money? And that was the one thing that. Uh, I discussed with the caucus as well as the speaker when we were formulating our wish list that none of this funding is going to be used to for personnel mm -hmm. with regards to uh, salary increases or or new hires. You know, this money is should be strictly for the people uh, and and to help them recover. I mean, hence the word recover. You know, uh, and rescue, as well as. Um, what is it? No additional hires and no additional salary increases. Yeah, that was the one thing that I, I should have brought up and I forgot to, to bring up to ensure that that doesn't happen. But, you know, I know that uh, Congressman Nicholas was on, uh, had a press release. I didn't get a chance to see all of it, just snips of, of his perspective on what cannot be used for the for this um, ARP money. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that was interesting, but it was never mentioned about the university part. So I wonder if we can still utilize that for the university. But it does go to the students, the people of Guam. I, I don't see why it should not be included. All right. Well, uh, Bree, anything else? Um, wow, well, sounds like maybe you should have just jo um, joined Senator Joanne Brown and just kind of skipped out. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> with your snacks. <laughs> yeah, I, I told I, I totally respect what he was doing, you know. Um, I really, and I have to tell you, I was there to roll up my sleeves, but I had no intentions of keeping, I took notes to tell, you know, the media if they ever asked mm -hmm. what happened, what went on. I mean, nothing in there is, is to me, is private. Um, I will speak on it and, and tell you what happened. Well, so thank you. There's, yeah, I mean... Uh, we all need to try and work together. That's true. I mean, the intention is to do that. I guess it so depends on So she didn't really that. miss much? No. In fact, I gave her a rundown. Tried to give her a rundown uh, as much as I could. Uh, today I'll meet with her and tell her everything that, you know, Senator Brown, what, what went on uh, during the meeting, which, yes, she didn't miss very much. Uh, definitely did not have to a list from the governor's office to tell us what their wish list was. I mean, that was the, I think we were all anticipating that. Yeah. I think we all were, at least on the, on the Republican side, we were like anticipating, okay, tell us what exactly are you going to say? You thought there were going to be printouts or passed out little folders, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, nothing. And the only thing that I, I came away with for sure was that still she's going to maintain that $300 million for the hospital. Mm -hmm. And other than that, that was it. You know, nothing else. Um, so we just need to keep an eye on this, uh, continue to um, monitor the funding that's, that's coming in, because it's very important as we head into the budget uh, budget time. Mm -hmm. Right. So, as far as Monday. If you guys meet again, let us know. Yeah, please give us a oh, heads up. I'm, I'm, I will request that yeah. the media be involved and come in the next time, Thank you. you know, this happens because it, there was no need. It's a waste of time to have you, you know, have another separate meeting on the other side. Um, you could have. You could have been there. There was no reason why you could not. Have, there was nothing secret, secret. <laughs> but it was just a thought, you know, that that having it uh, um, transparent is very important. So basic. And I and I have I respect Senator Brown for what she did. Okay, Senator. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Senator. Create, right on. Create a great day, everyone. Got it. Uh, let's.